Previously on Fool's Gold Sands. No, you two can go to the arena. This is where I uh, say my goodbyes. I guess I'll see you. See you. Rooster, why don't you spend some time with me today? I'll need to find me some brains today. He like puts his hand on the brain. You can actually see him casting something. What were you doing? Hmm? Oh, consuming its memories. I heard from Kor that uh, in the abyss, people just die and then they like stay dead. That's the case everywhere. Well, I disagree. And who told you this? Hosen. Hosen. After the arena tonight, please take me to them. Is this a friend of yours or an enemy? Friend. Hello. Good morning, citizen. What brings you to the palace? Thunderbird. If you'll follow me then, I am King Holland. You're here for um, the weapon, of course. Yes. The weapon you seek, I located it at the highest point of the Parchlands. It is on the peak of Mount Chibera. We're done here, right? We're... Because he goes to cut his head off. Wait, 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 wait. Um, we don't need to do it right now. I've taken the liberty of signing you up as a combatant in the arena for tonight's event, and I shall be your prize. Your terms are agreeable. And the guard says, now um, for the fight tonight, once you get to the arena, please check in with Arena Master Jeb. You will need a partner, so hopefully you can find someone. And I could use your assistance in a tournament <gasps> at the arena. <laughs> We're gonna beat those things up, whatever it is! And whatever we... it is! Yeah! <laughs> Then we better get you two to the arena and signed up. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that. Do we have to write? Do we have to write? Do they take a whistle? Right. Oh. Uh, well, then we better go find out. I, I don't know. We better hurry. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Run. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just pictured that audio editing, just like that fading out. Like, <laughs> 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 that's <Sure>. the transition. <laughs> the three of you head over to the arena. But as we're as we're getting there, I think Cor is just getting progressively more pumped. Yeah, because it's like he was dour before because he didn't know what was in store for him. Mm -hmm. But now he's just like, I get to fight a thing, and complete my mission. Fuck yeah! Let's I'm gonna go. Gonna go punch some things. Yeah, let's go. Uh, you can see that uh, as you get closer to the center of town, it's already being advertised all over the place. Mm -hmm. Big arena fight tonight. Four teams of two fighting for glory, for the ultimate prize, and the king himself will be in attendance. This arena in front of you is definitely the, one of the largest buildings you've seen in this entire city. It probably takes up like half of the entire place. Um, and it is proudly labeled the Chrome Dome. Ha. He doesn't get it, so he's like, aha! What's a Chrome Dome look like? A polished man's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bald giant. No. <laughs> It's quite literal to its name. This is a um, it's a spherical building. You can only see about half of it sticking out of the ground, but it does look like it goes into the ground. Mm. And true to its name, it's pretty much completely chromed out. This thing is shiny. It's the future. Literally, it's like the future chrome dome. Mm -hmm. And you notice around a few twists and turns, there seems to be a kind of back entrance where some people are trying to get registered. So you guys head over there. Let's get in the line. I love lines. Let's go. He, that caffeine is going to crash. He's going to crash from that before we even enter the tournament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, and you just deal with, like, lethargic rooster. Oh, no. Yeah. Let's go. All right. You head to the, the lineup, which eventually clears up, and you get to the front. And uh, in front of you, you see a rather scarred and buff knoll with a little tiny name tag that says Jeb. That's Jeb. I need to talk to Jeb. Oh, is that Jeb? Yeah. Oh, Jeb. Ah, Jeb. That's me. I'm Jeb. Jeb. Pal. Jeb. Who are you? Rooster. Kor. Hi. Oh, Kor. Been expecting you. You're one of the contestants for today. Yes. And this oh. is my uh, partner and comrade, Rooster. How exciting. So the two of you will be fighting together? Yeah. Yes. 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 I'll write that down. And he just like smashes a pencil down and like breaks his clipboard as he like carves the names in there. I like your style, sir. Thank you. I like yours, too. Thank you. Elegant. 
Now then, uh, sign here to sign your soul and your wa life uh, waiver. I don't know. I don't really read these things. You got to sign or you can't get in. Got so. it. And just fucking grabs the pencil and goes, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Is it written in common? <coughs> yes. Fuck. Okay. He just signs it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know how to read this. She's too hyped up on adrenaline right now. <laughs> I all Rooster knows is it's part of Core's mission, so he has to sign it. I mean, yeah, it's Core too. It doesn't really matter what it says there. All he knows is he has to win. Excellent. No hesitance at all. I like it. Well then, the fight is going to start in a few hours. So if you'd like, you can uh, still stroll around and prepare yourselves, or you can come right in behind me and enter the backstage. Backstage. Backstage it is. Backstage it is. Right this way, gentlemen. You guys enter the Chrome Dome. And what you can immediately tell is that this building is multiple layers of spheres. So you enter, and you're kind of just like in a cargo slash utility area. And then comes the second layer, which is all the bleachers where people sit. And then you'll see, you can kind of see in the distance, the third layer down this hallway which is the actual arena itself. Question. When you say it's a, it's made up of spheres, do you mean like an egg carton or like an onion? It's like an onion. I mean, it's an onion, but egg carton. I'm trying to... Like like multiple spears, spears ah, sitting next okay. to each other. I see what you mean. Onion. Yes, okay. This is onion layered. Onion, onion ball. Onion ball. Onion ball. You also see some of the other contestants. Right, we do them with here. You can't quite see them all, but there's definitely um, one duo of... Hobgoblin and a goblin. Yeah. You see... Good. And you also see a couple gnolls. <laughs> okay. You There's not, a lot of gnolls in this area. There huh? is a lot of gnolls in this area. It's like a, I guess it's like a desert savanna area. Yeah, so Majority. Maybe they yeah. just like it here. And you don't see the last team. Okay. Mm -hmm. As you've been told, there's four teams today. Mystery. Okay. Mystery. So then what do you want to do? Uh, what, what do we do for your mission right now? We wait... And we prepare for the f battle. Which will be right over here, gentlemen, as Jeb comes up behind you guys. Ah. Ah. Over here, we have a chamber for all of our contestants where you can freshen up, deal with that little jaw problem of yours, and uh, get yourself ready for the fight. We also have some cool flashy outfits if you choose to wear one. Flashy outfits? Right this way! <laughs> and he leads you guys to a uh, small chamber. Well, small. It's about... It's like a gym room. Like, mm -hmm. Sorry, um, a locker room. But essentially, this is a private area just for the two of you. And in here, you find um, everything you need. Like you need, everything you need to clean up. You find a locker with a bunch of different outfits in it with varying sizes. Uh, there's a mirror. There's even like some training dummies in here. Mm -hmm. Anything a arena fighter could want. There's mm -hmm. even a small but simple meal set up, uh, which is a 9 out of 10. What the Ooh, fuck? Damn. All right. You two enjoy. Uh, when it's time to fight, you'll... Well, I'll be here. You can't really miss me. <laughs> All right. Boom. Slams the door shut. I want sunglasses. And he's going to go check out and see about the sunglasses. I'm also going to check out the wardrobe section. Yeah. You say you want sunglasses and you rip it open. And like, you know, you look around and immediately sunglasses like appear in your hand. Like you just reach in and just somehow you have sunglasses in your hand. What kind of sunglasses? Which ones you want? Ah, okay. He probably pulls out normal ones. He's like, no, too plain, and puts it back. And then he's just like, I want extra pointy. And then he pulls out, and they're like, you get ones that are like silver with like spikes all over them. Ooh, no, too too pointy. Uh, <laughs> I think he spends like a good amount of time taking in and out until eventually he lands on his own goggles. I like these ones. You have two goggles now. Like you got double or you just ended up where you're like, oh, wait, I already have some on my head. Like that's sort of No, thing. I think he pulled them out in this exact same ones, even with the same crack in it. And he's like, oh, I like these. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you you he, like you hear a faint sigh from the wardrobe. Somebody in there? Hello. You get no response. Ah. Cora is looking over like the wrestling leotards, <laughs> like the, the like the ones that like yeah. What, what is <laughs> what is Cora's like dream leotard? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Does it have like like it's just a picture of Abrith with like two thumbs up on it or something like that? No, he's not here for brand deals. I like to think he. he no, but will... it's like this is Cora's personal favorite. Okay. Uh, oh, I, like I see. I see. I um, like to think he'd probably look like a figure skater. <laughs> 
It's like a star. A male just figure bedaz- skater. Just bedazzled. The male figure skaters with the blue leotards that sparkle and shine with fucking glitter. You, you know, I'm gonna help you out here. Okay. You pull out a leotard that is literally like a print of Abreth with like two thing, like two thumbs up. Uh-huh. So it's like yeah. You get another one that's just like a full body like costume with cape, and it's like 100% coded in sequence. Like it's just <laughs> all reflective. Uh huh. He's probably like really looking him over. They're like he's doing that thing where he's like looking at the both in, in the mirror, like mm, 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 <laughs> having a hard time picking. What if you did both? And then another, you see another outfit that kind of catches your eye in the wardrobe that is like a mix where like you have all the sequins and that whole outfit, but it's a bunch of horns and spines on it. Mm. And as it sees you hesitate, they turn blue. <laughs> You hear I, another sigh from the wardrobe. <laughs> I'm sorry. <Yeah. laughs> I've never per- picked out clothes for myself before. I'm not used to this. I'm a difficult shopper. <laughs> Choice paralysis. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> Roost, is there any other outfit pieces you want? Uh, the thing is, is all of his outfit pieces are from people that he cares about. So it's kind of like he just, his value is more of what people give him. He has a hard time picking anything for himself. Okay, let me think. Which he probably is wearing the goggles. He's like, oh, I already have these. And he puts them back. <laughs> As you hum and haw what you want, the wardrobe materializes something in front of you. And it's just a flashy light blue shirt with a big old heart printed on the middle <laughs> with your face plus Corf's face. Yay! Saying BFFs. Yay! It does say like Dream Team on the back. As you flip the shirt around, Dream Team appears. Yes. <laughs> and then a second matching shirt appears of a larger size. <gasps> this one pink. Car! <laughs> Car! Four turns to look at that and he goes, I found our uniforms. Oh my god, it's <laughs> glorious. <laughs> he throws the shirt at you. Yeah. <laughs> Puts it on. Hell yeah. Plus one charisma. Yeah. 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 Like temporary. For this fight. Okay, good. I'll put it in my temporary score. He's also gonna find really obnoxious sunglasses. I want those sunglasses where it's like they're they've got like they've got palm trees on them. Yeah. <laughs> you get like the ones with palm trees and they're like slits rather than lenses. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and also he's gonna get a cape with a fluffy collar. What color? We'll go for the sparkly blue. Sparkly blue, love it. This is like, Cora has never gotten to pick out his own outfit before. So this is absolutely like when you let a, a toddler into like the parent's wardrobe and they're just like, everything! <laughs> Rooster, a sparkly pink cape appears in the wardrobe. All right, fine. He puts it on, but he's putting it underneath his scarf. He's not taking his scarf off. That's fine. That's his scarf. <laughs> uh, and as you guys were so enamored with the wardrobe, you didn't notice something sneak up on you. Um, let me just roll here for a second. I feel powerful. Also, if I if I like nom on some of the charcuterie or whatever, do I heal? Because <laughs> I took 10 HP later. Let me finish. Okay. Core. Yeah. Does a 18 hit you? Yeah. You're you're flat footed. Yeah. And rooster, does a 16 hit your flat footed? Yes. You didn't notice. Something water-ish has wrapped itself around your leg, and it's just kind of rubbing around your leg. It looks like a, now you feel it, and now you see it. It looks to be some kind of like water serpent. Hello. Uh, what is that? Is it new buddy? I already have a partner for tonight. It, it doesn't seem to be malicious. It just makes bubbly noises. I guess he'll try to like pick it up off of his leg. Yeah, you pick it up. Okay. And it crawls towards your face. He's like holding it full arm. Length. And it does like little snake tongue kisses at your wound and heals it. Oh. This is an animated healing potion. Aww. And Rooster so does the same one. Any pains and aches you may have had, it looks all over you and makes sure you're tip top shape. <laughs> it probably wraps around it and then comes out disappointed like, I don't know. Like there's nothing left. He's like, yeah. No, it actually looks quite happy. It's giving me kisses. Oh, wait, I did take a punch yesterday. Yeah. So. You slept through you, That's you were, true, I slept yeah. through it. It's giving me tiny kisses. <laughs> and then it goes back into its pond. Oh, that tastes back. like lavender. <laughs> <laughs> lavender? <laughs> sure, lavender. Yeah. You, like, kiss it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you also enjoy that little charcuterie buffet. Yeah. Delicious. Nine out of ten. Mm-hmm. All of the good foods there. Ten out of ten on Trap Advisor. Trip. Trip Survivor. 
Trip Survivor. I'm Trip Survivor. Mm-hmm. 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 So mm-hmm. far. And then you hear a big bang on the door. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. What? Corbel <laughs> answered in his full attire. He's got the sunglasses on, the t-shirt, the cape. Yeah, you see Jeb and he says, whoa, I like the cut of your jib. Ah. Thank you. I like the cut of your jib. Your jib. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, hey. One brain cell. What are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. This Jeb is, is here. Okay. Jeb's here. It's time to fight. Time to fight. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, you guys didn't notice. You were so enamored with the wardrobe. Hours have passed. <laughs> it's like three hours have passed. What the hell is Nelthor been doing? You don't know. Okay. He's just hanging around. I he's, thought he was hanging with he's us. Gotta, no, he he's wasn't there. To go get oh, himself. he wasn't with us? No, he's not with you guys. because probably he's got himself a pretzel. He's or... a viewer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you are led out towards the arena by Jeb. And as you walk through the hallways, you can already hear thunder. People are stomping. People are cheering. People are clapping. It's getting louder and louder. Court's they excited. are hyped. Getting so excited. Course fucking excited. I think that this is probably a very common culture thing for demons. I think demons fucking love like arena battles, Absolutely. coliseum fights. He's he never had time for these things because he was always like he had he had like twelve hour like training classes, stuff like that. He's mm-hmm. never like this is this is his day on the town. He's fucking stoked. Yeah. And then you hear the announcers say, "And here come our final contestants." Oh, I forgot to ask. What's you guys' team name? Jeb would have asked you. My bad. Oh, okay. Actually, Jeb says, "Shit." What's your team name? Quickly. <laughs> uh, you got to make it quick. Oh. They're waiting. Like, please. Okay. Uh, mm, well, I have mm. to really think about it. Trip Survivor. <laughs> the Trip Survivors. Uh, okay. And then Jeb just like shoves you guys into the arena. <laughs> it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Yeah. And shoves you in and you just blind it by bright light in here and the cheer of like probably 2,000 people. Like, it's busy in here. It's loud. The energy is pumping. There is music. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. And as you walk in, you feel like a clunk as the doorway behind you has been sealed off, as the entire room has slightly spun and shifted. Mm-hmm. And you're now in the arena. Now, it's quite an unusual layout from what you think an arena would be. You do have that kind of like half bowl-ish bleachers layout, but there's quite a few levels to it. And you can also see that the bleachers are on a separate sphere so they can actually rotate independently. And you see that they are slowly moving like in a circle around you so everybody can view every angle. Mm. And the arena is on its own jig, I guess you'd say. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be a bit disorienting, but Nothing's moving too much yet, so you guys are okay. This is exactly the kind of reading that would give you Felix motion sickness. I would vomit. Yeah. <laughs> I love it here. Man, man. Yeah. <laughs> Go team. Before you, you see the three other teams. You see the two gnolls, the goblin and the hobgoblin, and a fire and a water elemental. Whoa. Like mm. Fire and water genasi. Sorry. Ah. Question. Yes. What are hobgoblins like? Because I'll be honest, I just kind of picture them as a Smash Brother recolor <laughs> of a goblin. I'll show you a picture. They kind of are. Some people, like other like JRPGs and stuff, will treat them that way. Where they're mm. just like, yeah, there's this later stage goblin, hobgoblin. They're more people. Oh, okay. It's a little bit more like in an intersection between like an orc and a goblin. Kind of, yeah. People goblin. They're taller, muscu- more muscular, you know, they're almost more like a, I guess, like elite goblin. Mm-hmm. They're down to party. If you got a goblin and an orc and they love each other very much, it looks like a hobgoblin. <laughs> but it's not. But it's not. And we're moving on. That's a gorklin. <laughs> yeah. The four teams, which is you included, assemble in the center of the arena. And people are cheering and stuff. And then, boom, spotlights go to a podium off to the distance. And, Kor, you recognize King Holland at the top. And King Holland kind of stands there proudly, taking in all the, you know, the the cheers and applause, and then kind of spreads out his wings, and then everybody goes silent as they await his words and says, Dear citizens of Kikuma, it is my utmost pleasure to present to you to tonight's arena battle, the battle of duos. We have our four duos down below. I am also, well... I need to be honest with all of you, this might be my last event. 
boo. And people are, yeah, exactly. People are like, boo. The rooster, the rooster just booed. <laughs> yeah, yeah but rooster also, booed. Also others. Yeah. There's people booing. And says, I know, I know, but everyone's time comes eventually. And today, my time has come. We love you, Kingy Man. Yeah, people are just like, we fucking love you. <laughs> <laughs> but fret not, fret not. You are in good hands. And my next of kin will be taking wonderful care of you all. And I don't want my last day to be remembered as a sad day. Let it be a glorious day of trials and battle and blood and chaos. And people are just like, yeah, fucking cheering. I'm told Arena Master Jeb has picked out the most devious challenges for our contestants tonight. May they get lucky. That was different phrasing. May luck be on their side. <laughs> that was the one. Yeah. Not, I don't, do not get laid. <laughs> fight. I want you to fight, not fuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, the who, is like, what is he saying? What are we doing? I can't. And he just turns away from the mic. So I can't. Who, who skipped giving me the notes? I need my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks away. Um, yeah, and with that... Thunderous applause. People are just like, ah, oh, fire cheering. And then you hear a big thunk as your platform is moving and you can see everything around you moving. And the arena you're standing on has turned upside down. Oh, shit. And Whoa. you fall briefly downwards. Not to hurt <laughs> yourself. You don't hurt yourself. But you fall down towards a platform with a door and a keyhole in the center of it. And Jeb says... And our contestants on to the first challenge, finding the needle in the haystack. Will they find the key in time before they drown in sand? And then poof, sand starts flowing into the arena slowly. Who will be able to find the key? Who will be able to enter the bunker and save themselves? There is only three keys, but four teams. Onwards to the first challenge. And then from the platform you used to stand on, you can see it. Its bottom drops out, and a fuck ton of keys fall down oh all boy. over the arena that you're on. Ah. Let's do this. Oh, boy. And we're off to the first challenge. In the Chrome Dome! How do you guys want to approach this? The other teams are scrambling. Immediately, they start looking through keys. Ah, uh, okay. I want to go look at the hole. Yeah. It, it's a big old fantasy-looking keyhole. Can I put my hand in it? It's not that big. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what I asked. It, no, it's like you got, you need to use a key on the keyhole is what I'm uh, saying. Okay. Hmm. A key like, like to it's not, fit the hole. Like your hand will not fit. If you try to do roguish stuff, that's different. Okay. Um. All right. I mean, Rooster's not really panicked. He's just kind of like, all right, Cor, mm -hmm. you and I need to figure out how to get a key out of all these keys. Do you want to just grab a bunch and try? Sure. You have to just grab a handful of keys. So who grabs a handful of keys? We I both will. do. You both do? Sure. Wonderful. Rooster, ah. oppose grapple. You have to beat a 13. I beat it. Corey, you have to beat an 18. Oh, I, I beat it that. I got a 17 on the die. Okay. Perfect. You guys both barely avoid the mimic keys biting you. Oh, God. Oh, fine. Shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, uh, these guys aren't keys, are they? Hello, can you talk? <laughs> Do the mimic keys all look identical to each other? I don't know if you can tell because they're all just key shaped. So I would say you do find a few other like key shapes, but it's hard to say kind of all these keys are blending together because you're in piles of them. Okay, mm. and but are, are all of the keys mimics or are some of them just just regular inanimate objects. I guess you'll have to ask and check all the keys. There's only a few thousand to get through. Mm, all right, well, we need to. We definitely need to come up with a better strategy here. And huh. the sand is slowly filling the arena. Hmm. What if I just ate the sand? But I don't know if I could eat that much sand. You can see the goblin near you has already start, started with that strategy and is failing. It's just too much sand. <laughs> yeah, he looks at him like, ah, no, that's not going to work. Okay, strategy. Keys. What if I just ask the keys? Is any key the right key? Rooster, does a 15 hit you? Uh, defender rules, I think. Yes, okay. 
A mimic responds by trying to bite you, but fails. I grab the mimic. Okay. Try to mimic shove it into the hole. It does not fit. Ah, throws like the mimic. Oppose grapple. Because you notice these keys are quite sticky. Uh-oh. I rolled an eight. And it continues to hold on to you. Like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. And deals you six points of damage. I'm going to bite on it. Well, first it bites you for six points of damage. I know, and I'm biting back. <laughs> okay, give, give me a bite attack. <laughs> I got a uh, 15. That'll hit. Deal damage. Seven points of damage. Nice. You bite one key in half. Well, okay, that wasn't and, it. And you definitely notice it's not a key. It's squishy, and it's got to taste really bitter. Okay, I don't really like that. I have a... I want to approach the GM bench with an idea. Yes, approach. Um, I have a spell which I just lost track of. Okay, I have a spell called Eyes of Avoral, which grants sharp eyesight receiving plus eight racial bonus spot checks for the duration of the spell. Can I use this and and reason that the racial bonus gives me the ability to spot the difference between the mimic keys and inanimate keys? Give it a try. Like you're saying yes? I'm saying the spell, you know the spell, and you know that it gives you way better eyesight. But it says specifically on racial bonus spots. Receiving a plus eight racial bonus on spot checks. Yeah, it just means it gives you plus eight. Okay, yeah, that's all it does. So you know the spell improves your eyesight dramatically. Sure. I will uh, attempt to do a spot check then. Go for it. And see if I can see if I can locate, maybe in like the sea of keys around me, if I can locate an inanimate key. Go for, for it. sure. Okay, that is a 18 plus 8, 26 to spot an inanimate key. 26. What you spot is a clump of three keys stuck together. All right, what are they stuck together with? Can't quite tell. But what you saw from Rooster is actually these mimics have kind of like a sticky mucus coating. Okay, so the mimics are sticking together, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, but are those those three keys seem to be... They're stuck together for some reason. Because it doesn't seem like the mimics are sticking to each other. Oh, I see. It's just okay. sticking to people. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah, I'll grab them. Okay, you grab them. Big brain dingo. Oh, post grapple. Mm-hmm. Post grapple. <laughs> Question mark. Close grab. 11. <laughs> 11? Okay. Uh, you take six points of damage as instead of you grabbing it, the mimic just bites your thumb. Fuck. One of the three that I tried to grab onto, basically. Yeah, so you know at least one of those three keys okay. is definitely a mimic. And then you hear a big click behind you as the first team, um, which is the water and fire genasi, jump into the door and close it behind themselves. Oh, hey, they got in. And the first, con- the first duo has already escaped. What will the remaining three do? We will continue watching. I mean... More I, sand! And the sand starts flowing faster. I mean, I'm going to try and get the... I'm going to try and grab the inanimate key in that in that bundle of Mimic. Mm-hmm. Shake the other one off of my thumb. Okay. Can uh, I try to help? Sure. How would you like to help? Describe it. Uh, so you're trying to get this clump? Yeah, there's a, there is... As far as I can tell, there is at least one inanimate key in this clump of Mimics that I've grabbed. I'm going to put my hand in. And let the other mimics bite my hand. <laughs> okay. I'll be like, okay, you grab it while the other mimics take it. Yikes. So, did I take damage from the one that bit my thumb? Yeah, six points of piercing. Oh, sorry. Wow. God. Rooster, you take one and five points of damage as two of them bite you. Okay. Okay, while well, they're distracted. And the third one didn't bite you. Okay, I grabbed that one. And you one. clearly see which one it was. Yeah, I grabbed the one that didn't bite us. You've acquired the key. All right, Yay. I'm going to try and I'm going to run over to the keyhole and try to... Uh, Try to open up the door. Ka-chunk! The door opens, flies Fuck open. Yeah. The two of you dive in. Yeah, grab Rooster and we go tumbling in. Boom, and the door closes behind you. <laughs> we did it! Yeah, how yes. bad? High five. Wow. For trip survivors. And you hear in a distance, ah, oh, damn. What was that? It looks like it came from the Genassis. Huh? Oh, hey! Or like points them and be like, ah! <sighs> Not defeated so easily. I didn't want to have to deal with you in the next few rounds. Why not? Too bad. It'd be easier without. Well, I guess it would be easier if nobody participated. But we're going to win. No, because we're going to win. That's where you're wrong, kiddo. What do you <laughs> I'm not a kid. You win? <laughs> oh, you're definitely a kid. What? No, I'm not. He is, a, he is a kid. I am not a child. This is three against one. You are a child. No. I didn't know they let children into this competition. I am not a child. See? They couldn't have let me in if I wasn't a kid. 
If I was a kid, they wouldn't let me in. Mm, we'll have to check with Jeb later. Mm. That is correct. You hear blaring in this room, you're in. See? Jeb says so. I'm not a kid. I'm a genie. It's different. You hear a lot of, like, commotion outside. And then eventually you hear, ka the door opens and closes. And I'm going to roll for which team has made it in. If I roll low, it'll be the two goblins that survived. If I roll high, it'll be the two gnolls that survived. Mm. High. Ooh. The sand-eating strategy <laughs> still hasn't quite worked out. <laughs> they were trying hard. Bad love next time. And... The, no, like you hit the door flies open, the gnolls come in, the door closes, and then you just hear shh, as the arena just like fills up with sand. You think they'll be okay? Probably. Okay. If not, they'll just come back up. They'll be fine. A moment passes. You hear the noise of a lot of sand rushing away. And then you feel the ground kind of ka-chunk move. The ceiling open and you're pushed upwards. You're back on the arena. No more sand in here. And everything seems slightly out of place because everything in here is moving spherically. I should also point out, as I mentioned, this building is huge, right? Mm-hmm. Which also means the arena itself is probably 100 feet in diameter. So it's probably, sorry, 100 feet, like, radius. Whoa. So you're like, it's like a 100 foot drop to the bottom Jesus. of the arena and 100 wow. feet to the top. Oh my God. In all directions. Because the radius. Because <laughs> it's a circle. <laughs> Math. I hate math. The old. As you have passed the first challenge. Welcome to Coffee Time, where you find out that Felix is actually a trained barista despite hating coffee to death. Today, we're going to read your lovely messages. Uh, From Brightwinged. Happy 27th birthday, Brianna, one of our most terrifying DMs. You always manage to keep us on the edge of our seats, fearing for our lives, while making a great story that leaves us speechless. Hopefully, we won't burn your next plot castle down. Love your cockadoodle dudes. Your cockadoodle dudes? I do like the cockadoodle dudes. Yeah, that's pretty good. (laughs) My turn. Uh, This is from Jason. This is a PSA for flumps. Have you checked your flump today? Make sure you give them lots of hugs and love while feeding them all the mind flare thoughts you can before being inevitably charmed and sacrificed to them. A small price to pay for a little flump. Have you ever seen a flump? They're they're adorable. They're fucking adorable. I haven't seen one. They're they're like, they're like pancakes with tentacles. (laughs) They're a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. No, it's an actual D&D no, thing. No, like, like, flumps are, like, really... Like, that's the cutest thing in the Underdark, basically. Oh. And they're actually good. They're, like... Mm-hmm. This is the one good thing in the Underdark yeah. that gets harvested for thoughts. They don't harvest thoughts. Like, they eat thoughts. Who's... But who's getting harvested? The Mind Flare thoughts. They eat Mind Flare psionics. Oh, so they are really good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, go flumps then. Everyone go get yourself a flump. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you, flumps. Jason, for informing me about the flumps. Yeah. Flumps. This was an F. Flump. That's what I said. You said flump. Flumps. Flump. Like a, it's like F L U M F. I'm gonna have to redo the whole thing now. <laughs> right. No. No, no. It's, you know, flumps can actually like they they change color depending on their mood. Oh, like a mood ring. Yeah, yeah. So it's oh. like when like. When they're amused, they turn pink, and then when they're sad, they're blue, and then I did not like, know that. When they're angry, they're red. So mm. yeah, they're just like a portable mood ring. Well, only their <laughs> mood, but this still. This really has been a PSA about flumps. Alrighty, and for our final message, we have one from Becca and David from Behold Miniatures. Ready to elevate your D&D games? Behold Miniatures provides hand-painted or primed 8K resolution 3D printed minis. Our miniatures are made with a durable resin blend for accidental drops or falls and ship worldwide. Need a specific creature? Just ask. New miniatures are added every month. Our minis will bring your campaign to life and joy to your table. Shop now for ready-to-play and ready-to-paint minis on Etsy at Behold Miniatures. Use promo code FOOLSGOLD for 20% off your first order. Yeah, these guys actually made us really sweet minis for Core and Rooster and the Goose Hydra. Goose Hydra. Yeah, I'm, I've gotten the Core mini in my hands right now and I'm looking, looking at him. I love the little Eye of Abrith that he's holding. No, these are super detailed and like 
He's even got like I got the rooster and he's got a little crack in his in his goggles, which is like so tiny. He even got like a little bite mark out of his sword. Like it's insane. Yeah. I don't think I've seen this stuff so detailed. So this is this is pretty wild. Also, you can tell that this is this is hand painted. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thank you very much, Becca and David from Behold Miniatures. Yeah, thank you. And we're definitely we'll be posting the uh, pictures of them. Online. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Pretty sick. Also, I'm terrified of the the goose hydra. Yeah, <laughs> Felix like picked it up while picking up his DM notes and walked away, and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> 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 like don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, a big thank you to everybody who bought a message. It really supports the show, mainly our editor. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like to get one, you can do so at foolsgold.fun slash sans. Okay, but for realsies, let's get back to it. Let's go. Let's go. Back in the main arena, and Jeb says, And there are the three duos that have survived the first challenge. Pictures all around. Oh. It's also time for us to reveal what their grand prize will be today. Sponsored by the local Bucks Bulky Backpack. I know that guy. We've got the grand prize today of the Splendorian Tent. And they show, it's like a super flashy looking tent. It's like the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely like flashing <laughs> lights. <laughs> and yeah, and it says, The one and only Splendorian tent, the size of a mansion inside, convenient and small to carry around. I want Ooh. it. And the tent leaves. No. I'll bring it back. Come back. <laughs> oh, wait, I can... We haven't gotten any compliments on our outfits. Oh, if the applause is anything to go by. Oh, okay. They're too far away. We can't hear them. What do you guys think of our outfits? And I can, like, show it off to the Janassi. Ta-da! The Janassi look at you with their clothes that are literally made of the opposite element to themselves. Flowy. And they're like, ours is better. I mean, I I disagree. Well, you're objectively wrong. Uh, Clearly. Sparkly cake. cake. The contrast of our outfits. (sighs) Corey, is unmatched. Cor, they're using really big words I don't really understand. Mm, I, th- I think it means opposites. Children wouldn't get it. I get it. I, I also get it. But I, I'm not a child, so of course I would get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Before we begin the second round, a riddle from our resident Sphinx. Who will get a little advantage in round number two? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> And floating in on a platform is indeed straight up a sphinx. And the sphinx says, This will be very straightforward. Whoever hits the buzzer first, and then three buzzers appear in front of you guys, gets a chance to answer the question. And the first team to answer the question right will win this. And she presents a healing potion. Okay. Two healing potions. Cora's fucking ready to to bash that button. Yeah. Can we do it now? No, you have to wait for me to ask the question or I will kill you. Oh. <laughs> I don't take kindly to that. Okay. Round she is, yet flat as a board. Altar of the Lupin Lord's jewel on the black velvet, pearl in the sea, unchanged but ever changing eternally. What am I? Buzz. <laughs> Rooster, you hit the buzzer. I think I actually know. Maybe. I think I may know it too, but I'd need to hear the riddle again to be sure. Can you do it one more time? No, you've already hit the buzzer. Okay. It's too late now. What does Rooster think? You hit it. Okay, I hit it. Can I fail? Okay. At the moon! There's a dramatic pause. That's a good one. That is correct! Oh Oh my god! (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) I like to think, like, because Rooster's, like, dumb as a a door, so I like to think that this is the one moment where even Chorus is like, what the fuck? (laughs) Even, yeah, I mean, Chorus doing that thing, like, (laughs) can you solve it? (laughs) And the Janassi are just like, what the fuck? How did this kid just beat us? But indeed, Rooster, um, the Sphinx floats down on her platform and hands the two of you one healing potion. (laughs) Nice! Woo! And you each heal. Uh, you can roll 1d8. Is it uh, the snake? Oh. Hang on a second. Does my feet count for this? What's your feet? I get to roll 1d10s for healing spells. It's not a healing spell. Dang it. 
Yeah, it's only when you cast that. Oh, well. Can't blame the girl oh, for trying. Fuck yeah. I rolled an eight. Hell yeah. I got a three. <laughs> I like to think in the crowd, Nelthor's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you definitely hear Nelthor sometimes. The crowd is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's more like you see him in the crowd because he's swinging his sombrero around. Yay. Yay. I mean, maybe there was some kind of like, there was probably like some backwards logic that led Rooster to the solution to that problem. I also like to think that, like, because his memory and his life is so Swiss cheese, just somehow it it was relevant in his life. Yeah, like to somebody's like, told him that riddle. Before. You know, people are getting ready to think about this, and like she just says, and Rooster's like, "Eh, Moon, what the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think there's like something in his past, even if he doesn't remember it, where it's just like this is something that he actually. Knows. You're snapped out of the moment with the ear piercing voice of Jeb saying, "And it's time to start the second round." And the sphere starts rotating, going all over the place. <laughs> it's everybody's favorites. Are what our local special musical chairs? Party! What is musical chairs? I don't. I think I played them once. They're like, uh, you go around in a circle and you try to sit on the chair when the music stops. Okay. And what, rising from the floor in front of you are uh, two extra wide chairs that will fit two people beside one another on there. Mm-hmm. But of course, there's three teams. Mm. Or actually, you know, we'll actually make it spicier. There's four individual chairs for six people. And then the sphere around you rotates and you see coming up is a bunch of sand cacti and giant scorpions hmm. which are now on the ceiling of the arena hmm. that's that's not supposed to be there and hmm. the music starts and so just, yep. are the cacti and the scorpion on the ceiling and the chairs are on the floor yeah so okay. you guys are on the arena floor uh-huh. uh you're yeah you're you're on the arena stage okay. where you were. And on the ceiling, almost as gra- if gravity doesn't quite exist, desert, cacti, giant scorpions, rocks. Mm. And there's like a good bunch of them. It doesn't look like a good time. Okay. When the music stops, you better strap yourself into the chair or else you'll meet my favorite pals up there. And this is pretty much just going to come down to reflexes. Right? Oh boy. So, however, if there's any kind of cheating strategy you guys wish to employ other than just rolling straight reflex saves I'll just encourage that line of Mm. thinking I'm gonna throw a rooster in a chair (laughs) I was thinking of rooster on your back oh sorry I should also specify something as the music is playing you can see that the chairs are buzzing with lightning oh Oh, I see okay alright then whatever your plan is Uh, what if I just you know, get on your shoulders. Okay. Oh, wait, no. You're not very fast. No. No. Okay. But I'm very strong. You are very strong. Okay, then hold on to me. Okay. And the music stops. Reflex <laughs> saves. And reflex, yeah. You're gonna try pull I'm, core. Yeah, I'm, ha- okay. I'm holding his hand. Core also do reflex. But I'm gonna work with okay. that, that Good. you guys are helping each other. I thought of something cool, but I only thought of it now. Yeah, that's still, do that's next still time. Round. That's time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, so Cor, what did you get? 18. Rooster? 12. The music cuts. The chairs go unelectric, so you can actually sit on them. Mm -hmm. And you guys, boom, slam yourself onto the chairs. However, the fire genasi and the knoll fail. And you see that as they're like rushing towards the chair, they suddenly lose their footing. Mm -hmm. And as if gravity has flipped, they get pulled to the ceiling. Oh, no. And you guys can actually feel the pull of gravity reverse. It feels as if you guys are on the ceiling right now, mm. as your hair is also, like, hanging downwards. <laughs> and I you like feel that. a bit of a head rush. Yeah. And now they get to fight scorpions. A moment passes. The music picks back up, which means the chairs also get kick you off. Ow. And then falling from above, boom, come those two people. Now a lot more bruised up and banged up from the scorpions. However, still standing. Hmm. Next round. This is definitely not the musical chairs I've played before. This is, I think it's quite fun. It is. It's just more electrical. How many rounds of this do we need to survive? Until two people have fallen conscious. Okay. I have an idea. Rooster? Mm-hmm. Actually, sorry, core. Yeah. Will save. Oh, all right. He's, he's getting ready to conjure a spell, but I guess that this whatever this is hits him first. Ooh, okay, I got a 21. 
Ooh, you resist. As you can tell that the water genasi attempted to cast whole person on you. Hmm. And Rooster, one of the gnolls is rushing towards you. Hey. You have one set, one action before they make contact with you. Uh, friend or foe? Friend or foe? Uh, not a friend. Not a friend. Okay. I'm <laughs> pulling out my sword, uh, and I'm if they're rushing towards me, I'm gonna move my swords down below and try to hit them at the ankle. Ugh. Go for it. Roll your attack. Uh, first one's only a nine. That misses. Second one. Ooh, that one is a. That's a crit. Well, that hits. Roll damage. Oh, max damage. So nine, uh, 18. 18 points of damage. Damn. Just swiping at their feet. The null drops. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. You probably cut its foot off or something. Yeah, probably. No, literally, like, you, you just you swing. Null trips, does not get back up. I mean, I moved to the side. Good job. He was definitely a foe. And one contestant goes down. That one only took one round. We can't wait to see who will be the next person to fall. Cor, what are you doing? I'm casting Ice Slick on the ground. Where? Uh, in between us and the chairs. In between you and the chairs? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can... Ideally, around the chairs is if the chairs are the, fo- the center point of the Ice Slick. Okay. Sure. You do that. All right. Um, meaning a lot of the people who are standing right near the chairs right now are getting a bit icy. Yeah. Power slide. Power slide. Yeah. yeah. Power slide into the chairs. Are we getting Music ready stops. to? Power, Power slide. slide. Go for it. What is what is it normally supposed to be? It's a reflex save. So I got a 12. I got uh, 17. I'm giving each of you guys a plus two okay. for the power slide. Nice. 17? That's yeah. a 19 for you. Okay. Fire Genasi. Eight. Water Genasi. Five. Other no. Nine. Okay. <laughs> We're all really piss poor. As again, you feel the effects of the gravity reverse, and the fire genasi and water genasi are pulled up to the scorpions. You hear the awful sounds of combat and rah, things are going crazy, and the crowd cheers as only the fire genasi returns. Oh shit. Oh no. So that means that technically the two people fall unconscious. So do the others progress forward as an as a team now? And that's what they are kind of looking at each other with. And Jeb says, I guess we've got a new team on our hands. Oh shit. Did we finish it? We've got the hype hyenas matched with the elementals. So we've got we've got the trip survivors and the hype elementals. Ready to move into the final round. Are we still doing musical chairs? Nay. Ah. And the chairs sink into the ground. Uh-uh. Also, the arena again rotates. The scorpions and the desert rotate away. And you can also see the um, uh, water genasi's corpse rotates away. Oh, no. <laughs> being nommed on by a scorpion. Well, I guess being drank. It'll be fine. They'll be back. Mm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. definitely don't think Cora likes this arena. No? No. The, the motion of the ocean is getting to him a little bit. Yeah, the rotating. <laughs> Let's go with the flow, Cor. When you feel real queasy, just let it all out. No, I'm fine. I'm going to handle this. Just barf it out. Mm-hmm. Barf it. No, stop saying barf. <laughs> Do it with your mouth like bleh. Stop it. The arena has reset. Jeb once again comes in and says, That concludes the second round of our arena. Though a little quick, it was um, unfortunate, but... Uh, Whatever, we're moving on. Uh, bring in the Sphinx. We're going to do the second round here. Let's get this going. Oh, another riddle. Yeah, and the Sphinx once again floats in, kind of rushed, trying to prep itself still. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... It's a, doing up its hair. Exactly. It's still like, oh, in the rollers. Okay. Yeah, it's still in rollers. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> what means more to you than it does to me? Bam. Fire Genasi hits the buzzer. I'm going to roll 50-50 if they get it right. High, they get it right. Low, they get it wrong. It's a low 27. They got it wrong. Uh, they respond with uh, water and then um, they get electrocuted. Mm. Uh, core buzzes. Core buzzes. Okay. Yeah. Winning the tournament. You get electrocuted. At what? The- <laughs> <laughs> oh. Buzzes. Yes. My life? Ding. You get healing potions. Fuck. Why is Rooster so good at fucking riddles? I love Also, why are you so good at riddles? I don't know. I'm terrible at riddles usually. <laughs> so this is core coming through. This is not me. 
Um, Wait, ro- rooster coming through. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're doing it too. <laughs> yeah, now I'm doing it too. Rooster's coming through, not me. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I guess we get some. some Maybe it's just a genie thing. Genies are just really innately good at the riddles. You each get 1d8 healing. Hey. Ooh, yeah. I'm like one point short of full health. Ooh, I'm all full now. Nice. Good for you. I don't. I love it that he's actually good at r- riddles. That's, That's really very funny. funny. Yeah, it's very funny. You're gonna have to go home after this and like read a bunch of riddles online so that if this, if this ever comes up again, you can continue your winning streak. Yeah, yeah. You guys are briefly pulled out of the arena again into like a bit of a waiting area as they set up the next round, and both the fire genasi and the knoll kind of have a bit of a uh, mood <laughs> because their companions just lost. Yeah, you guys okay? They both give you the stink eye. You don't need to converse with them, Rooster. They're our enemies. Well, Probably the next round we'll have to defeat them. I mean, they're more like, you know, battle buddies. Listen to Rooster, me. does a not one hit you? What is it? <laughs> as, as the knoll tried to punch you, but trips instead and falls. I want to catch him. You catch him. Eh. And I pull him up. Uh. I'm not trying to be your enemy we're not friends why not because you killed my friend i didn't kill him he fell into you got him killed how did i get him killed by winning no it was i actually it was gravity that killed him but try to punch you again okay of course steps in the middle of that (laughs) okay you prevent the punch okay he's like get back to your side if you have any problems with us you can settle it in the ring Mm, you're damn right i will and don't feel too bad They'll come back. As soon as he walks away, Cor turns to Rooster. Mm. Rooster, you need to understand. This, these are not our friends. These are our, our enemies. We need to defeat them. It is extremely important that we treat them, take this seriously. I am taking it very seriously. We'll win. Don't get me wrong. But it doesn't mean we should be mean to them. This isn't about being mean or being nice. This is about, this is just about winning. This is about kicking your ass. And I want to do it in a nice way. So I'll win. Don't worry. But I'm not going to be mean to you for it. Uh, You see that he's actually turned his back to you. And then you hear a yelp followed by a crunching noise followed by a thud. What the? (laughs) Whoa, whoa, whoa. As the knoll turns to you guys with the heart of the fire genasi in his hand. Oh, my God. And then eats it. And becomes a fire knoll. What the fuck? Oh, they can do that? <laughs> they can now. What the fuck? Uh, see, that's what I'm saying. We shouldn't do that. Oh, we're going to do that. And then the arena starts lifting up. Hmm. I call that bad sportsmanship. Yeah, it's not great sportsmanship. And Jeb says, Ooh, that looks like some poor sportsmanship down below, but an exciting final match. As we get to the final, well, semi-final match, of the evening. Semi-final. Semi-final. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting your inner selves. What could be more exciting than your inner demons? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a, de- a demon. I am a demon. I'm an outer demon. <laughs> I have mean, the inner ones, too. You got to look up with your knees. Uh. And as you turn, like as Jeb is talking to you, you hear a noise behind you. And as you turn, you can actually see copies of yourselves. Oh. But they look, um, they look messed up. They like they look like copies of you, but at the same time, they definitely look like um, aberrations. Like they, they like they mm. look distorted, uncomfortable. Yeah. It's not quite right. They look like if you, they look like us if you stuck us in the microwave yeah. <laughs> and put a funny mirror in front of us. Yeah, yeah. My nose is not that big. And the goal is quite simple: last man standing with the trophy wins. And you can see behind these guys is indeed a trophy. It's not the tent that was presented earlier, um, but it is just like a kind of, it's like a square golden base with golden orbs floating above it. Mm. That is the trophy. Ah, square. Weird. Good luck to the contestants. And don't be too hard on each other. Ding! And you're off into the third round. So, okay. These are like us, kind of like a Shadow Link situation. Do you want to take on mine and I'll take on yours? Fine. Okay. Okay. So what are you what are you doing exactly? I'm going to go fight the core. Well, you notice right away 
is that the other, like that your copy matches your every move to a T. Meaning when you go to fight core, you essentially come up kind of to the center of the arena and you are facing yourself dead on. Mm. So I have to like turn to actual core to fight core. That's going to be for you guys to figure out. Let's go take the other guy. <laughs> turn around. You turn around. Grapple. Uh, sorry. Um, not, not, not grapple yet. No, it does hit you with a 19. Now you roll a grapple because Noel is already on your ass. Nat 20. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I like to think the Noel comes, tries to grapple, and then Rooster just goes, Hah! and just like throws him over yeah, his body. You do like the like judo throw? Yeah. yeah. And you like, boom, now he's prone right in front of you. Core is impressed. Yeah. Roll initiatives. <laughs> yeah, what'd you get? Nat 1. Oh my god. At least it was on my initiative. Yeah, you know what? It's a saying. It's fine. It's the end of the turn. I got a 15. So are we doing our rule where if you get an at one on initiative, you lose your turn? Yeah, you're so excited yeah. that you just skip a turn. Yeah. You're like, oh, I got you. I got him. Look, Core, I got him. That's, that's great. Core. Yep. What are you doing? Uh, I oh, mean. Oh, and Rooster, you saw the two other copies do exactly the same move that you just did. So like the what, the Rooster copy just did that on, on like empty air? No, on the null. Oh yeah, the Knowles guy. Oh, yeah. that's right, right. I forgot he had a copy too. Um, well, I guess if Rooster is busy with the Knoll, uh, then I guess Quar will just try to fight himself then. Sure. Which I'm sure is not a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I think Quar just sees you, you and the Knoll fighting. Like, all right, that'll be you a job then. And he turns to himself, and then he is going to raise his his hand and like punch into his own open palm. And when he does so, he's gonna cast Ice Gauntlet. Hell yeah. So as he's staring down himself, he's going to run full tilt and then, like, basically come in with a punch. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, probably his logic is like, this thing looks like me, but it can't hit like me. Go for it. I guess I'm rolling against my own AC, or am I rolling? You are. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I beat my AC. I got a 15 on the die, so that means that I beat him. It's the it's, So it's a spike gauntlet. It's, it's, it acts as if it's a spiked gauntlet. Uh, Plus one spike gauntlet deals normal damage for your size and 1d4 of cold damage. So I guess it's an unarmed damage hit plus 1d4 cold. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did 10 points of damage. Three of that is cold damage. To yourself. Ow. Okay. What number did I give myself? It's 10? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, that doesn't work. Yeah, he just takes a full sock on the chin from himself. Yeah. And we have learned our lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Encounter spends his turn getting up. Okay. And like fucking coming back to his senses. And Rooster, um, you're so excited about what just happened. Um, Can I say that what happens is that he's so hyped and then suddenly the caffeine kick stops? Oh no. I was like, oh, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't start yawning. <laughs> no, what are we doing again? All right. Oh, he's up again. Four. Yep. Your turn again. All right, well, can't hit myself. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Gonna turn to the knoll. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I will take out my meteor glaive this time, and I will attack the prone knoll. Go for it. So he got up. Oh, sorry. I miss. I only got a two to try and hit him. It, like, two on the die. You miss. Mm -hmm. And the knoll just, like, gives you a big fiery grin as he reaches by himself and pulls out a battle axe and swings at you and tries to hit you with a 15. That, oh. Defender rules. I, yeah, I beat it, yay. <laughs> My AC is 15. And then, Core and Rooster, give me fortitude saves. You have to beat a 12. I beat a 12. I did I, not. I got an unnatural 20. Rooster, you did I got not. a seven. You take two points of fire damage from the radiating heat from this guy. Ow. Ooh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Uh, with that, Rooster, it's your turn. What was I doing? All right. Oh, God, I feel like garbage. Um, Rooster, focus. All right, right. We're fighting. He, like, slaps his face, um, which I guess the other one also slaps its face. Yes, it does. And he's coming with his swords to the back of the knoll, because if the knoll is facing core, he's just going to go and hit his back. Ooh, uh, no, that does not hit with a six. You got to beat a 15. I do not beat a 15. I whiff both. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. It's, it's the coffee. <laughs> it's the coffee. You're just like... <laughs> uh, my swords are really heavy for some reason. And you see Jeb saying, Oh, no, someone get that boy another cappuccino. Core, your turn. I will attack 
the Null Janassi. Go for it. 16 to hit him. That will hit. How are you attacking him? With my Meteor Glaive. Nice. Deal your damage. Big spin of the chain and then whoop. I did 10 points of damage to him. 10 points of damage? Mm-hmm. Nice. Definitely feels that. Where are you hitting him? Like, where are you aiming? Mm, probably just aiming to hit him right in the chest. Center of mass? You have a big, you leave a big fiery gash mm. in the center of his chest. And he's not too happy about that, and he's about to return the favor. He takes a deep breath. And then Blue spits fire at you. Hot dog. Hot dog, <laughs> literally. Um, both of you, give me reflex saves. It's not my strong suit. I got a 15. I got an 8. Oh my god, Rooster. I rolled a 5. Bruh. Rooster, you take five points of fire damage, and Core, you take two points of fire damage. Ah, it's too hot. Oh, sorry, three, I forgot we round up. Three points of fire damage. As he just unleashes, basically, dragon fire breath on you guys. Whoa. Oof. Yeah. That's really cool, but also really hot. <laughs> Core, you're not weak to fire, are you? I don't think I am. No, in that case, you're just very uncomfortable. Dislike. You're getting grilled Uncomfy. right now. Uncomfy. No. Rooster, what are you going to do about this? I'm going to fight him. <laughs> fight him. I'm going to hit him with my sword. <laughs> no, I didn't hit him with my sword. I'll try again. Eh. Ooh, I got I got a crit on that one. Oh, shit. Yes. Deal your damage. Okay. okay. How are you attacking him? Describe it. Um. Well, if if he's... He just faced me, right? Yeah. With the fire? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I'm coming up, and I'm doing again, sliding, doing my power slide slow and going right for the ankle. And once again, Rooster comes in and just cuts his leg off. <laughs> I mean... He was almost dead, so... Uh, oh, okay. No, like, you killed him. Oh! Yeah. You finished him off. Whoa! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, he, again, you cut it through his leg, he falls, and you actually see as that fire that was around him starts to kind of consume him. And uh-huh. now the corpse is just kind of on fire. Uh-huh. That's... Ah. Uh, hmm... <laughs> And it dissolves. Oh, I did it. We did it. Great. Now what? Now we have ourselves to deal with, I think. Oh, like our our guys? Yeah, although I think that Kor and Rooster are like looking at these things and they're looking back at them, but they're not moving. And then I think Kor like just looks over at the trophies and he just says like, if we don't attack them, they don't attack us. So can we all just grab the trophy together? Does that count? I mean, the whole objective is to get the trophy, right? All right. What's your solution? We're going to run, try and run at the trophy. Okay. You're going to have to get through them, though. Oh, they the are going to try to stop us. Them. Yeah. Essentially, you can picture this. Uh, sorry, I'll describe it a bit more clearly. You can descri- picture this as a roughly circular platform you guys are on, mm-hmm. almost as if there's an imaginary mirror in the middle. That's where they are copying you from ah. on your half. And on like behind them, on the end of their circle, is the trophy. So what if we just went past them? Well, they will always block you because they perfectly copy you. Ah. It's like a mirror. Huh. So we need to defeat them, but we can't do it because we'll reduce each other to zero HP if we try. Yeah. Hey, uh, gab, jab, jab, job. Don't talk to the omniscient voice. I, I am. I'm going to now. No. Why not? You stop. But. Cheat. I'm not cheating. I'm just asking questions. You get electrocuted. Ah. I mean, our team won. We're winners now. Nobody wins here until they grasp the trophy. How many of us need to grasp the trophy? Well, can either of you even grasp it? Can they even grasp the difficulty of this challenge? Boo. Or will they kill themselves trying to get that trophy? Boo. Shut up. You get electrocuted. (laughs) Hang on, I'm looking for something. I don't want your balls anyway. Use your brains. This is big brain time. I know. Let me think big brains. Can kind of think of this like there's a mirror in the middle, Mm -hmm. but instead of glass, you know, it's like it's you touching yourself that's blocking you. You can't get past the person in the mirror. Close your eyes. Okay. What happens to the one behind um, behind the mirror? Closes their eyes. Damn it. (laughs) Perfect copy. Oh, I'm a dumbass. Okay. Um, Core turns around Mm -hmm. and he walks away from himself. Yay! Yay, You got it! I did it! Okay, I go, he like, he's just like, he's like, Rooster, tell me when I'm close to it. I'm gonna need you to like guide me to it, because he can't really, he can't see the thing, the, this, yeah. Yeah. Little left! Okay. Left! Yeah. Oh wait, is that left or right? 
Uh, other way. Uh, okay. Other, other way. Sure. Straight. I mean, back. Stop. Okay, to put your hands out. Get, get, get grabby. Get grabby. He grabs it. Grab those balls. Who's to grab it. Your copy grabs the trophy. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll turn around and walk it back over to me. And then you actually grab the trophy. Yeah! Yeah! I hold up the trophy triumphantly. I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah. You solved the puzzle. Yeah. And then he makes eye contact with the king all the way across the arena. Big ol' flashing lights happen all over the place. You guys have just won the arena. Everybody's cheering their heads off. Woo. You see the audience is spinning around, the arena is spinning around, things are going crazy. There's confetti, there's balloons, there's snakes. It's a good time. Ah. <laughs> Everybody loves the birthday snakes. The party snakes. And then eventually Jeb interjebs and says, Did you and do that's this purpose? Yes. Did you... Okay. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. And our final challenge has been completed. Our contestants have won the trophy. Unlikely as it seems that a couple newbies would claim it. And of course that means you see the Sphinx uh, that has, has had yet another outfit change float down towards you guys with a 10. <gasps> I'm going to so draw the Sphinx in different outfits. <laughs> Please do. Please draw the game show Sphinx. I want the tent! But first, another riddle. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right. I'm leaving this in your no. hands. <laughs> right. Come on. I'm so... It's funny. I've had a streak, but I'm so shit at riddles, like, normally. I'll give you guys an easy one, okay? No, no, no. Give us a good one. Give us just the one you think. Yeah. You don't want no piss baby riddle. We ain't no quitter. Mm-hmm. Here's your final riddle. What can run but never walks, has a mouth but never talks, has a head but never weeps, and has a bed but never sleeps? Who wants to be millionaire music playing in the background? <laughs> can you just do it one more time? Yeah, yeah. You just like hearing my voice, don't yeah, we you? Yeah, do. All right, well, thank you, thank you. I like my voice as well. What can run but never walks? Has a mouth but never talks. I know it. Has Love a head. Rude but so never weeps. Has a bed but never sleeps. What? <clears throat> yeah, now you hit, hit the buzzer. I hit the buzzer. A river. That is correct. I had the exact same. Yeah. I had the exact same. <laughs> Congratulations. And she hands you to the tent. There's only one tent, though, so you guys figure that out amongst yourselves. Goodbye. And she floats away on the platform. Goodbye. Bye. What a nice lady. Well, you won the riddle, so you get the tent. Oh. Uh, we can share it, I'm sure. Yes? Mm. When we travel? Yes. I have another destination to get to, and I could use your help. You hear the entire audience go, aww. Yes! The entire stadium does that. Uh, travel survivors prevail! People cheer. And even some people have like started making like makeshift signs, writing your names on it. Like they're writing <laughs> down like um, team uh, trip survivors. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. And here we come to the ultra secret surprise encore! encore. The bonus round! Ooh. Who will survive this one? Boom. The platform shakes as the king lands in front of you, having flown down from his podium. Hmm. It's the kingy man! And he is wielding a bow and arrow. Hmm. What's that? I am the encore. Surely before you put me to death, I may at least die a warrior's death. Well, we don't gotta kill you. Yes, we do. Perhaps you wish to step aside for this one. I don't wish to fight you if you don't want to. You can if you want to, Rooster, that's fine. It's my job to take him out. This is part of your mission? Yes. Then I'll help. So be it. Kor steps forward and he starts spinning his glaive. The king steps back and readies his bow and arrow, pulling the string tight. Initiatives. Hey, thank you for listening to this episode of Fool's Gold Sands. If you like the show, you can check out our website, foolsgold.fun slash sands for a bunch of extra content there. We have cool stuff like concept art, comics for backstories, even some extra character art, and you can buy personal messages for coffee time to support the show. But that's all for this week, so I will see you next time.